A perpetual check is when a player delivers a never-ending series of checks that leads the game into a draw since the same position is reached three times in a game, which is known as the three-fall repetition. If you are in a losing position with no way to checkmate and your opponent may checkmate you soon, using a perpetual check can be your best option to avoid a loss. Here is an example. In this position, black has a winning material advantage against white. However, after white checks at e8, black can only retreat to h7. White queen checks again at h5 and the black king returns to g8. White can repeat this perpetual check two more times, leading to a draw by threefold repetition. To find a perpetual check, you can use your pieces to block the opponent's king's escape so that it stays in check. If the opponent king is near the edge of the board or in the corner, it also has fewer squares to escape to. With these in mind, how can white deliver a perpetual check? In this position, white's rooks limit black's escape squares to e8, f8, and g8. After white knight checks at f6, Black King escapes to f8, White Knight checks again at b7, Black King moves to g8, and White Knight checks at f6 while protecting the rook. This repeats until White draws by threefold repetition. To avoid a perpetual check, you can use a piece to block the line of attack and stop the check, or create space for the king to escape the check. You can also give up material to break the check as a last resort. With these in mind, how can Black avoid a perpetual check by White? In this position, white threatens a perpetual check with queen to f5, black king to g8, and white queen to c8. Or, after white queen to f5, black king to h6, white queen takes at f7, and black king to h7, white queen checks at h5, black king retreats to g8, and white queen checks again at e8. So, to avoid perpetual check, black queen moves to b5, defending the f5 square and also its d pawn. An under promotion is when you promote a pawn into a knight, rook, or bishop instead of a queen. Although the queen is usually the most powerful piece, there are positions where under promoting allows you to deliver a better attack, avoid a draw, gain a draw, or defend against an immediate threat. Here's an example. In this position, white's best move is to promote its c-pawn. If white carelessly promotes to a queen, however, black will be in stalemate. So it is best for white to only promote to a rook to gain the winning advantage. In another position, black could promote its d-pawn into a queen, but that only equalizes the material for both sides and will likely end in a draw. Instead, black should under promote to a knight to deliver a fork against white's queen and king, which gives black a winning advantage. Now, in this defensive position for black, White's rook threatens to capture black's pawn. If black promotes to a queen, rook, or bishop, then white's rook checkmates at h1. Instead, black under promotes to a knight and checks white's king. A rook versus knight endgame is a theoretical draw, so promoting a knight in a rook versus pawn endgame is a good defensive technique to salvage a draw in a losing position. How do you know when to under promote a pawn and to which piece? You need to first consider the position of your pieces, your enemy pieces, and then the tactical potential of under-promoting to a piece other than a queen, as well as your opponent's counterplay. Under-promoting to a knight could be useful due to its unique movement, creating opportunities for forts, discovered attacks, and other tactics. Rooks and bishops, meanwhile, contain the limited movements of a queen, and it's typically best to avoid an immediate stalemate. How should black promote in this position? White's queen is a move away from checking black's king and is likely leading the game into a draw. If black promotes its f-pawn to a queen, the material is relatively equal for both sides. Instead, black should under-promote to a knight to deliver a fork against white's king and queen, eventually gaining a winning material advantage. Note that under-promotion is a rare tactic, so you will promote to a queen in most positions, except for when these opportunities arise. A desperado move is a tactic in chess where you sacrifice a piece that is trapped or about to be captured. The sacrifice can capture an enemy piece, damage your opponent's position, or create a stalemate. By using a desperado, you can gain an advantage or reduce your opponent's advantage with a doomed piece. For example, white's knights threaten and trap black's queen. So, black plays the desperado by taking white's knight with the queen at c3. 
Black enemy takes with its V-Pawn, Black Bishop takes a D1, and White Rook recaptures at D1. Although Black's Queen was in trouble, the Desperado tactic prevents White from gaining a material advantage, and Black maintains its winning position. To set up the Desperado, you must first identify a piece that is trapped or in danger of being taken. Secondly, decide what you want to achieve with the Desperado. Do you want to capture an enemy piece, disrupt the opponent's position, or create a stalemate? Thirdly, consider whether the sacrifice is sound for the golden line. And finally, plan to follow up with a strong attack or defense. With these in mind, how can White best play the Desperado? In this position, Black's G-Pawn forks White's Queen and Rook. Instead of retreating the Queen, White uses its doomed Rook to take at h7. After Black Rook retreats, the White Queen retreats. So, the Desperado allows White to capture a Knight in the exchange instead of losing the Rook for nothing. To prevent your opponent from using a Desperado tactic, you should keep your pieces protected and anticipate what your opponent could try to achieve with a Desperado move. With these in mind, how could White be setting Black up for a Desperado? White is losing in this position and it seems that Black can take White's undefended G-Pawn. However, doing so would lead to a stalemate since White's pawns are blocked and the White King has no squares to move to. Anticipating this stalemate, Black instead checkmates with Rook to E1, continuing to pressure White. An exchange sacrifice is when you sacrifice a Rook for a minor piece, such as a Knight or Bishop. A Rook's value changes throughout the game, and it typically reaches its full potential in the middle and endgame. So, this sacrifice can improve your position, defend, or set up a deadly attack in the opening and middle game without losing much material. For example, White can start an attack on Black's kingside with Rook to f6, removing Black's only defender of h7. If Black retakes with its bishop, White can checkmate with Queen to h7. You can also use this sacrifice to create past pawns in the endgame or damage an enemy's pawn structure. For example, Black captures White's dark square bishop when Rook to e3, and White recaptures with its f-pawn creating doubled pawns in the center. This gives black better control over the dark squares and a strong outpost for its knight on e5. Exchange sacrifices can create many more positional imbalances that turn material advantages irrelevant, such as controlling open files, gaining a lead in development, coordinating pieces, gaining control over weak squares in the enemy territory, and weakening the enemy king. For example, Black can take White's knight with rook to c3, and White retakes with its b-pawn. Although Black is down in exchange, White's key king defender, the b-pawn, becomes a double pawn, leaving its king vulnerable to a long-term queenside attack. Now that you've learned the exchange sacrifice, how to set it up, and why you should play it, 